right after we get, oh, we're live. Hey, everybody, welcome to Friday morning. Well, if you're watching it now, it's Saturday morning. This is 2OF Entertainment. Welcome to the Lost Dollar Business Club, where we talk about business, 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 and not just business. We talk about what makes businesses go up and what makes businesses go down. If you're interested in businesses, this is what it is. We talk about the global economy. We talk about global politics. We talk about everything and anything business related that affects your life on a global scale as well as a local scale. And don't miss after the show, Lost and Found. Here we is. There we are. Okay. <laughs> Before we even start, let's just say next week's show will not be at this time. It will be at three o'clock Eastern because mm-hmm. we have a special guest. We've got Michael Collins. <laughs> you know, Michael Collins again. He, he he draws. <laughs> he definitely draws. This is a, this yeah. is a guy who's got a lot to say. Yep. And uh, he writes great articles that Stephen and I and John always get. And yep. uh, we bring him onto the show to talk about the latest. The next time, next week, will be on uh, artificial intelligence and how the AI overlords are not thinking about how it's going to affect society and jobs and the average Joe. Thank God. I, I love the overlords. I mean, no, that's terrible. Who would yeah. know? That's crazy. Uh, right, so. Right. <laughs> so, well, it's good. Today, we're going to talk about, we'll, we'll, do the, we'll do the plug, and then we'll do commercials because you've got to pay some bills. Today, big- so today, today, we're talking about big pharma. Big Pharma, but this is this could be a big win for Big Pharma. This is uh, we're going to talk about the GLP one mm-hmm. class of drugs. So these are glucagon like peptides, and they've for decades been used to treat diabetes. And we're going to talk about it during this show and how it could be a breakthrough for many other diseases. Because of course they don't make money now; they're poor. So yeah, this, yes. <laughs> So, yeah, this will be interesting. I'm looking forward to this show. All right. You ready for some commercials? Pay some bills, boys? Let's pay it. All right. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bendicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bendicoot.com, official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. All right, All right. Well, let's start the show. So after we talk about Big Farm, everybody, if you've never seen the show before, we're going to do Lost and Found. <laughs> That's always fun. That's oh, just yeah. a bunch of weird stories that are out there um, that we like to cover. All right, well, let's talk well, about and, and we decide whether the dollar was lost or the dollar was found. Well, it's not here, so we have no sound effects today. But anyway, so let's talk about this, this the big pharma, the yeah. new drugs that can help people because the old drugs apparently don't. And when people find cures, apparently they get killed. So where do you want to pick up? Well, <laughs> we can, I would mean, start with the promising aspect of it, which is okay. these these GLP-1 drugs, which are uh, which are like Ozempic, for diabetes right. or Wigovi for weight loss. I don't know where they come up with these names, but uh, those are those are already being used for diabetes and weight loss. And right. uh, and it's similar to, the impact could be similar to like Prozac for depression or statins for heart disease, because right. uh, even though it's 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 been approved for diabetes and weight loss, they're starting to research it for many, many other diseases because there are these GLP-1 receptors all throughout the body, including in the brain. Right. So they're even thinking that this thing could help uh, substance abuse disorders and addiction, uh, liver disease, Alzheimer's. Uh, yeah. Well, there's there's a, there's a lot of things that it could it could possibly right. solve. So Alzheimer's. That's right. Um, so and if the article the article it, just for people that are trying to figure out what we're talking about was in the Economist. Um, That's right. And it has like a, it looks like a switchblade or a Swiss pocket knife, but it's basically a pharmaceutical pocket knife. Um, and we're discussing the drug, um, the category of drug that can basically, according to this, it's going to be a miracle drug. It can help your brain, your heart, your liver, your kidney, your pancreas, your mistress, your wife, your girlfriend, and your sugar baby. <laughs> so um, it's a great drug, I think, right off of that. Great but don't, we, we have all these drugs now that are supposed to do things. So yeah. is this really a breakthrough or is just a, a, hey, we're running out of stuff. We better come up with something else. Uh, I think it's a breakthrough, right? Okay. It's, it's, because 
it's okay. It's a drug that that's uh, you know short-lived hormone, as the article uh, describes it. Uh, right. So it's 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 something new, right? Uh, and it's it's designed to you know it initially attack diabetes. Right. But you know it has uh, you know second order effects, and all of a sudden we're finding oh these the people that are on diabetes uh, on this drug over a period of time you know they lose weight right oh hey well, so you know they do you, you do additional research and you, you find that well yeah okay this little hormone you know ends up in other parts of the body right. and uh, as you said it, it goes to the brain and the and it begins to regulate other things that because of maybe the consequence of losing i mean of attacking the diabetes you know i'm, right. you know, I'm just uh, hypothesizing yes, yeah, yeah. here right? right but so you know like many of these drugs you know uh, uh, have second order effects that they weren't intent you know the the initial research wasn't looking at but right. you know once you introduce something into your body you know it's not just it's, it's not like it has a, a a postcode and it goes directly to oh you've mm-hmm. got this problem right well this is i think maybe the the, the beauty of these uh, new but, drugs. But I have a here's a question: If if the people producing our food would stop putting all the shit in our food, wouldn't we not have diabetes and have all these other problems? Like if you look back 150 years ago, people were pretty thin and they were right. healthy because they ate good food. So basically, what we're doing is we're saying, listen, you can go to McDonald's, you fat slob, and eat as much as you want and get as fat as you want. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you a pill that's going to make you healthy. Isn't that kind of, I mean, wouldn't it be well, better no, to start no at the root of it? This week. No quarter pounders this week. But yeah, I'm just no saying, quarter. I know, you, you pull up. but I'm just saying, wouldn't it be better if we started it at the very beginning, like in the alphabet at A? Because the drug part seems to be coming like, I don't know, X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, you're yeah, fat, you make you're a, blah, 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 blah. You, know? you make a good point. I mean, something that I was talking with Nusha about last night about the same article is that right. it's not going to require anybody to change their lifestyle. Right. So no exercise, no this. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, the, this miracle drug, miracle drug, you know, just right. now it can affect all aspects of the body and decrease, uh, make it easier to to continue your unhealthy lifestyle. Right. Yeah. Uh, in a sustainable way. The thing is, you know, uh, bad food is cheap. And when people don't have money, they go for cheap. Right. Uh, you know, the, yeah. the, the, yep. the, now, you could argue that if you buy uh, vegetables and, and and sort of the, you know, I would, I'll call them non-processed foods, right. mm-hmm. you, you can get cheap too, but it requires a little work. You know, you have to have some cooking skills. Yeah. And, you know, most people just don't have, you know, you know, either they haven't been taught this by their grandmothers and their mothers, Right, and so they don't get into this whole cycle. They've lost that, mm. and so now I just go for you know prepared foods or fast food at McDonald's, which is mm-hmm. easy, or a pizza, right? Uh, you know, or just or just stuff that's uh, you know it used to be the frozen food, you know, dinner. You know, right. now I, I'm not sure what what the now I guess you call DoorDash and order some <laughs> right. bad yeah. greasy stuff. So that's, yeah, but that, that's that's the point. So what we're doing now is, and listen, kudos to Big Pharma because, you know, we need to make another trillion dollars there because of the stock we own. So thank you. But I mean, to the average person, if you're not, and, you know, Americans are lazy. I'm sure most of the world's lazy, but Americans especially are lazy, right? They're fat and lazy. Most of them don't exercise. Most of them right. don't do anything. So this is just a way for some guy or some girl um, that's overweight to go, I'm just going to take this drug, like the other one that came out last year, right? That, that made everybody lose all this weight. That was um, epic, right. Yeah, was, and I'm like, class, yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay, so, and it helped, and you're going to get healthy kind of, they just don't know what the long-term side effects are. So are you healthy? Right. Yeah, we'll see. But wouldn't it be better to go for a walk in the morning or a run, ride a bike, do this, work out, whatever it might be. I never, maybe I this is that. the way, I mean, this, this is, this is the way to, to get that, to get that in immediate shortcut. I mean, what they've what okay. they've shown is that at least in some of the studies with the the seventeen hundred uh, overweight individuals, right, is that um, once they did lose the weight, 
they okay. were more inclined to live a, more, a healthier lifestyle. They were more inclined to say, okay. I like this version of me. I want to maintain it. I want to exercise right. now. Because to get past that, once you're already, and what is it, 60%, 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. Right. I mean, it's a huge yeah. number. So just to, to, to get the, those numbers down initially so that they can do lifestyle changes, so that they can right. exercise, because you can't exercise away a, a, a morbidly obese person. You just can't do it, you know, so... But this drug there's can a actually. You, there's a guy on YouTube that's like 600 pounds, and he's taken people, or on Instagram, someone sent me. He's like 600 pounds, and he's taken people over the last three years, his exercising down to now, I think he's like 300. Mm -hmm. and he wants to get to like, I don't know, we'll say 200. And I'm like, yeah. kudos to you, sir. Like, you know, yeah, his absolutely. first week of, of him watching him work out. You, I was like, dude, I feel so, I want, like, you just want to, like, I feel bad for you. And then from his first week where he couldn't walk like 10 meters, barely to now where he's like running a mile you're like yep. oh, and he's doing all this stuff i i i to your point i understand that it, it helps people but to another point i think it's just americans being lazy it's like i want it quicker cheaper faster and easier boom here's a drug we're becoming that society like who Huey lewis's song i want a new drug there mm -hmm. you go well i want a new drug uh, i got a new drug. Have it. yeah you know, i mean like people, pop a drug and good go ahead john you know the you know, a lot of people can't will themselves to 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 become a sinner, right? It, they, right. It's, it's you know, you know, I don't know, something wired in them. You know, their 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 metabolism. So if this if this does does the trick, then on a on a whole on a big macro, you know, at a, at a national mm -hmm. level, uh, it you know, I think the cost benefit might be might be worth it right because uh the cost of the, the healthcare cost of, of of people that are obese yeah you know is huge right right they, they have heart attacks you know they have all you know side effects uh, you know of, of diabetes so you know maybe if you look at it from that point of view yeah it's not great that you know it's people don't particularly change and it's a, it's a drug and it's kind of expensive um but it will get cheaper. It'll get cheaper. Yeah, it'll get cheaper. You know, and we will. You know, we'll get to the point where it's a generic drug, or maybe the government says, you know what, you know, you, you got to make it cheap, or we're gonna, you know. Well, no, so. Trump's gonna be in the White House, so it'll be a million dollars a pill. Um, but oh, like boy. the drug, the drug last year that everybody was raving about, where everybody lost weight, and all the celebrities were like, oh, you can put it in gum chewies and this and that. And uh, to a point, I get it. Like if you have a medical condition or a thyroid condition and you need some help, I'm like, I get that. Like you need, I get it. You need help. I got it. But the average person doesn't need that. Like I'm like, what's wrong well, maybe, with Well, side? maybe we can take it preventatively though. Cause there's a lot of this, this whole okay. class of drugs, this GLP one drugs, right. They reduce inflammation right. and they actually improve aspects of the brain. Okay. So they, they tested it with some Alzheimer's patients and they reduce the decline. They reduce right. the brain shrinkage, and uh, and this this could be used to to just so in general. Be it's just yeah, you're kind of like the right. Yes, because it, it decreases the risk of heart attack just off okay. the off the cuff. You know. So. But my point though, if that's the case, then let's not go. Oh, it's going to be like you have to go to your doctor like this other crap. Then this should become a vitamin. And if they know there's no risk. Whether you you and whatever wow. the age is, well, that well, we don't know. Yeah, right. We don't know. That's my yeah. point. So you don't know what age. So we're saying let's take it like a vitamin. Really? Yeah. So at some point, I don't care what the drug is. There's a side effect, whether it's negative or positive. This one right now has all these positive side effects. Like remember when Rogaine came out, um, and they found out that part of whatever was in Rogaine became Viagra or vice versa. Right? That's like, oh look, it grows hair, makes you wet. So this is the same thing. At some point, they're gonna be like, mm, good, bad, indifferent. I mean, it's good that it helps your liver and it helps this and helps that. But what's the long term effect? And at some point, does one pill do it, or do you have to be like, you know, does it all of a sudden you become an addict and you need like ten pills? And this 10 become 20. Right, There's, right. You know, right. so I, it's great that we have this and we're doing all this. And I'm sure some of it's because of AI and some of it's just because of the overlords want to keep us, you know, fat and stupid and keep giving us pills and making us live longer for the slaves. It's, it's just, but, you know, like exercise, the food, what are we going to do about that? 
I, t- I want to go back what to are like, we gonna do about don't eat. Well, like, or how, remember when McDonald's was healthy, when Arby's had real roast beef? Right. Like, why don't we go back to that? So then if somebody can't afford to go to a five-star restaurant or somebody can't afford yeah. to go and buy food or doesn't know how to that go would be the right way. That would be the right way to do that? it. Yeah. But people, people need to be willing to demand it. They need to be saying, stupid. They don't demand they need, anything. They need to say, we're not going to eat garbage McDonald's. Yeah, uh, on a regular basis because it's not good for you. you know? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's just like the, you know, the vegan burgers or vegan meat. Like, you know, just anecdotal. You know, uh, like those t- those companies are not doing well. You know, I mean, just no, anecdotally. No. You know, in my supermarket there was a whole little section. Yeah. Boom! It's disappeared. The yeah. Yeah, yeah, it used to be. Yeah. Nobody's buying it, or nobody buys it anymore. Have you ever tasted anymore. one of the, like? Anymore. And listen, I'm not trying to pick on one, but when my mom was alive, she bought something because we lived in Palm Beach. So she bought a Boca burger, you know, four pack of Boca burgers, and she said, "I'm going to try this. It's supposed to be healthy because she was a health nut, which was okay." And she read the ingredients; it's all healthy. And and I said, "How is it?" And she gave me this look. You know how like a little kid looks when you want to eat like spinach. And they're like, are you on drugs? So she gave me this kind of look and she said, taste it. And I'm like, there's no taste. And so I put like nine pounds of ketchup and mustard and relish on it. And I'm like, ooh, this ketchup is delicious. You know, it was sort of like, and that's the issue. It's like they make these cardboard things and they're like, it's healthy. And once again, the public is so stupid. It's like, oh, it's healthy. You know, because we're charging you $25 for four hamburgers. It's got to be healthy. Why don't we just do it? Why don't we just start from the beginning again? And I, but we go back to greed is good. So, well, this this kind of this kind of drug might actually put pressure yeah. on the food industry. I mean, the article says it, and a Morgan right. Stanley study they reference a Morgan Stanley study on it is that when people are on this, they actually take in twenty or thirty percent fewer calories. Yeah, right. and obviously, you're taking it if you're somebody who eats a lot of unhealthy food, like the high fat, salty products. You're right. eating less of that. You do that at scale. The food industry is going to have to have to theoretically change, and maybe become more healthy. Maybe do less of this garbage food. Do you think? Really? I don't think the food industry <laughs> gives a rat's. You know what? You know, I know that half the food we have here in America, they can't. You can't buy it and can't you because can't of what they also. come in from Asia or in Europe because of all the chemicals that are in it. Right. You know, and when you're in Asia or Europe and you buy food over there, it's sort of like Oh, this is what bread's supposed to taste like. You know, what I mean, it's like a big one. I mean, only only here do people have gluten problems, right? Yeah, right. That's crazy. Gluten, please stop with that, Americans, pussies. So <laughs> you know, it's like I have glu- I have a friend of mine who says I have to be gluten free. And I'm like, what does gluten do to you? Like American little, gluten, want- American and- gluten, American gluten. So, and he's, I was like, I was like, what does gluten do to you when you eat it? And he's like, well, you know, I just feel sluggish and tired. I'm like, that's because you don't exercise. You, just, you know, it's like, stop. But, yeah. So that's why you're Indeed, sluggish brother. and tired. And then he went on the, the keto diet or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. And I'm like, and he's like, I lost weight. I'm like, yeah, because all it is is like just, I don't know, chemicals. It's all healthy chemicals, I guess. And I'm just like, that's crazy. So we it goes back to something we always say. When we were kids, well, when I was a kid, because you guys, you're younger. But when I was kids, you know, when we lived in the caves and we had to go hunt for the food uh-huh. and kill it and light the fires yeah, and draw on yeah. the walls. Yeah. You were taught what to eat was healthy. You were taught right. how to cook. So, you know, as you got older, it was your choice when you got to university or you were out on your own. It's either order Domino's every night or eat healthy food every night right. or do a combo so you don't like deprive. And today, I don't think people do that. I think people today, they're just feed me, feed me, feed me. And I, mm. so I'm glad we have this drug. Um, and I'm glad Big Pharma is going to make a trillion dollars on it. But then, like, what's the next thing they're going to do? Like, once this one, once once this, you know, designer drug is out for a while, what's the next designer drug we're going to have? Well, I mean, it's... I, I would say anti-aging drugs, actually. Yeah. That's what they're but working even, on. Even, even, they ref, even they reference, everybody's on to anti-aging it's now. And yeah. I, I, I made a note. We'll have to find somebody to talk about those two drugs that they mentioned in the article that are rated higher for anti-aging right. than GLP-1. And let me ask you this question then, anti-aging. Okay. So we just say you get to live to be 120. It's really all the billionaires in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Right, that, yeah. Who can yeah. afford, who can afford to live that long? Nobody could afford <laughs> 
That's right. right. <laughs> but, my, but my point is this. Whether you can afford it or not, really, do you really want to be 150 or 200 years old? I mean, like, because oh, your we, body we at some should, point goes into totally decay. Roast. We should totally roast the, the anti-aging uh, population. Yeah, because they but go, they, mean, go they go too far. They go. They want to live forever. You know. Now, I mean, yeah, but, if you're 120 right. and you're you actually your body is not the you know it's, it's not like a 50 year old. Then I mean, yeah. it's it's what's the point? I mean, sure. if you're just like a, an old person oh, yeah. and you're struggling. You could, you could keep a as long as you're doing exercise, eating well, All right. and taking whatever next drug it is. Yeah. Imagine you could have a 50 year old body at 120. Right. I like mean, I, I exercise every day. Yeah. 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 Like I, I'm 7 million years old and I, I look That's good. Right. I look like I'm 50 million. But I mean, um, I exercise every day and I do, I try to eat right. And my cigars and scotch are part of my diet and I yep. am healthier, which is really scary when I see my doctor and I tell the story all the time. And I know people go bullshit. But then a friend of mine actually goes to my doctor and he actually asked me, he goes, Yes, yeah, Stephen's healthier than everybody in our literally that we have. Whether they're 20 years old or 120, he has no, there's nothing wrong. Like, oh, wow. when they, like there's no this, no that, everything works. We have no clue. And they say, and he's, the doctor's like, we're seriously telling people about him, like, he should drink uh, scotch and smoke cigars. Apparently that works. So <laughs> if you can live to be, a, if I can live to be 120 or 150 and I can keep this body or this body can become oh. a, a couple of years younger and I'm still mentally sharp, no comments. I'm still mentally sharp and I physically can go bunga, 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 bunga. <laughs> then I'm good with that. But what to John's point, it, you know, it may slow your aging down. So just say at 150, you're at, you're a hundred and you know, you're like, instead of standing up, you're like this and you, you know what I mean? So I don't, the anti-aging is great, but where are you mentally and physically you know, what does that oh, look yeah, like? That's... And then with 8 billion people on the planet, really? Yeah. Are we are well, we trying to get back? If you really believe the fables to the 800, 900-year-old people, and if you believe the Anunnaki's live to be 16,000 years old, <laughs> is that where we're going to go? I mean, at well, some point, there's going to be a war because we got to get rid of some people. Well, that's going to happen inevitably, right? Well, yeah, well, that's going to happen well. next year with North Korea and Russia invading the Ukraine. So um, so that's that will wipe out that continent. But I'm just saying, so the guys in Silicon Valley will get to live to be however old uh -huh, and yeah. seven people on the planet. Right. Right. So, They're going to have to live in a bunker or something with an army to, 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 right. to protect them. It's right. And you're going to have to give your army the same drug. Yeah. yeah. It's that's just right. not sustainable to have people live, you know, Beyond, you know, the way we're currently living. I mean, uh, as it is, eight billion, as you said, eight billion people, and we're, you know, destroying the place. Well, and and you've got of that eight billion, you've got the bottom three or four yeah. that are starving. So, yeah, you know, we're not taking good care of the ones that are here. Yeah, yeah. well, it's like we we spoke about last week. You've got eight billion people. Let's say a billion people are well to do, or maybe two billion. That if they live to be two hundred years old, they're good. No right. problem. They're good, right? John's got his Nazi gold. He's good. You've got your thing where everyone's good. You got 5 billion people and like just say another billion or two, they're middle class. Like they'll make it. You know what I mean? But then instead of retiring at 70 and enjoying the good life, you have to work to be 150. Like that would oh, be interesting to see going. how our social security does in America. That'll bankrupt it in a minute. Right. Now, to your point, you have 4 billion people that are tired, hungry, can't afford anything and the little bit they can't afford they struggle to afford when those four billion people decide that they want to take a picnic meaning a civil war on a global scale because it'll start somewhere yeah but who's gonna what are you gonna do they haven't done it so far yeah you know why because the the fat happy stupid mentality and if you look at what's going on just in america shoplifting like in san francisco they have that sign says if you shoplift under 950 we're not going to come after you even though apparently they do but i mean look at these people 50 people run into a mall and steal stuff yeah 50 people run into a market. target and steal stuff or a grocery store yeah people so yes it's happening it's Actually, happening that was, that was like that movie uh demolition man yeah I don't know if you that, yeah, yeah. No, you know, that's a, snipes and Sylvester that's a policy decision it's not a it's not anything other than a political decision by you know people in, in at the prosecution uh... right but but he said it can't happen 
but it's happening. You're starting to see that's uh, civil uh, unrest. Uh, when you uh, got uh, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, if yeah. we if we actually if we actually impose the law, yeah, right, good luck with that. Then we wouldn't have these people acting out this way. But we, you know, when you yes, act you something and you have no consequence, then you right, right. It. So there's no consequence. Yeah. John, let me ask you this: with no you, order, I'm, you're a, you're a police yeah. officer, and I call you, and I'm like, hey, there's some shoplifters at. X, Y, Z. And you're like, okay, and you're going to go do your job now, right? You're going to go arrest them. And there's 50 of them. And there's one John. What are yeah. you going to do? Not a thing. You're going to call for backup and you're going to watch them run by you. Oh, you and take you're not going to grab one. You, just you take that. Well, yeah. You're, no, you, you know, take, listen, well, next year, some of those videos, they, next, they next grab the ones that you can. can. Yeah, yeah, you grab the, the one that you can, can and you beat it with a billy club. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, oh, I don't okay. think you're allowed to do that. That's the problem. The, the police aren't allowed to police. The people know it, and your civil unrest is going to get worse. Now, maybe under Mr. Trump, we'll go back to 1939, and it'll be goose stepping and beating of people. And then, you know, well, whatever that's what happened the first time with Trump, right? Right, and then <laughs> that may be okay. But I'm just saying, if not, if even he's not going to be able to control it, if the population's like we've had enough, um, you know, I mean, I'm surprised and, that people aren't at that point already. You know, with the I way figured, the I think you're getting there. Is. Yeah. Well, the economy is at an all-time high. So we're well, going to switch from pharma for a second. According to the Economist, sure. where this story came from, there yeah. is a story. In America's economy is bigger and better than ever. And it goes into everything that why we are under this yeah, administration for, in the last. For a certain so class of people. Uh, uh, there's well, a huge chunk of Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, that's yeah. a big Barely. Yeah. yeah. So, And that's my point, though. We don't do anything to help them. And we've talked about this on the show. The candidates aren't talking about how you're going to help. All we're talking about is we're going to raise tariffs. And then the American public doesn't get how that works because they don't realize the cost of goods goes up. They think, oh, yeah, we're going to stick it to China and we're going to charge them 200 percent. And I'm like, realize that means what cost you a dollar today is going to cost you like five dollars tomorrow. No, it won't because China is going to pay. It doesn't really work that way. You know, and so it's interesting that the people hear the rhetoric, can't do the math. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and it's scary that none of them, you know, we have the ostrich on the Democrat side. We have the orange guy on the Republican side. Nobody's talked about the policies that really need to be talked about, which is health care. So you're going to help the lower middle class get up education. Like how, and I get tired of hearing make America great again. America's already great, right? We have technology. We have a booming economy. We have a great stock market, blah, 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 blah. We can make it better. How do we make it better? It's poorly no well. one's talking about yeah. that. Well, I mean, this this is this is an example of so this drug, for example, going back to okay. GLP one. I yeah. mean, the, the idea that if this is such a miracle drug for so many ailments, then they should then then the powers that be, the government should make this somehow accessible to more people than just the the upper crust who can afford to pay it, right? Right. And that that I, but that idea of making things accessible is often pointed out as, well, that's socialist, you know, you can't do something. But there are ways to do it that that are not purely redistributive and that are actually just being fair to the average American, especially because so many of these drugs are being researched with government dollars anyway. Right, yes. right. Yeah, so technically we own them. Yeah. Technically, in a way, we should, but we don't. Yeah. We just it's, don't put... It's Good we job. don't impose, you know, we 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 don't impose our ownership, uh, or That's our, right. yeah, our ownership through the the funding and say, look, when you, when you when you make a discovery based on the dollars that we are providing, which is you know maybe it's sixty seventy percent, we don't know, but yeah, right. well, some of those yeah. are very, some of them are getting all of it funded by right, yeah, government. yeah, it's you can't, you know, we we'll we'll impose the price, yeah, right. Right. But for some reason, you know, well, we know the reason. Right. Come corruption. On. It's you called know, corruption. Know that pharma. It's called it's called lobbyists. It's called we, political donations, super PACs. We, that, we can go through it all. We d we know that pharma is one of the biggest lobbying groups, right. you know, right. in Congress. And so they're writing the laws. They're yeah, writing. they yeah. write the laws and then yes, yeah, that's exactly right. They write the laws, they give it to them. And they literally they give it to them. Yeah. 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 It's just it's, this it's, is what we think you should pass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You write it. Okay. We'll do it. And then you're yeah. giving it. I mean, most you're, you're giving it to legislative directors who some of them are, you know, 
just out of college or they're in their early 30s or young young people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they might not know any better when they're looking at when they're looking they at know the they're just they know better. <laughs> they just, just go stupid. With it. They play ostrich as well. That's what they're just going saying. with it. They're just they're going with it. Yeah. They're going with a buck, you know. Yeah, let's go in front of Congress or Senate, and they were doing like Mr. Smith, tell us this. And Mr. Smith reads this prepared statement, and I listen to what the senator or congress is asking. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're trying to get a sound bite for TV. Ask a yeah. real friggin' question. Right. So, yeah. There's so many things we could do to change the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, look, do we need to have, you know, in in the rest of the world, the primaries and the elections is done within three months. That's yeah. right. Okay. Day and no a more. It no needs to be a constant election yeah. cycle. It's yeah. yeah. a billion dollars a candidate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous the amount of money that gets spent on this. It's a business. Uh, That's why, because there's yeah. political consultant business. There's this, the media yeah. business. There's this business. There's that. It's become, I, I want to say since probably JFK's time. Mm. It's been, yeah. come, I think before that it was an election. Like you still had it, but it wasn't like today. Today is a nothing more than a 24 hour, seven day a week, 365 day a year business. And so yeah. why do we take four years to like after Trump wins, I doubt there'll be another election. But if there is, the next candidate's going to start touting it out February well, they, 1st. I'm going to run. They don't, they're, they're starting, you know, they'll start day one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my point, right? To just, you know, I should, you should vote for me in 2028 if there's an election. Right, right. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to be one of these things. And I'm like, okay. But it's, it's again. a business. Yeah. It's a business yeah. with all the people and all the mouths you got to feed. And the American people just don't get it and they right. don't care. They want to keep their little they're piece of heaven there. and which no, can I mean, change. I think they get it. They just don't, you know. They're we, powerless to do anything about it. Yeah. You know, you are. I, I, do, I mean, I, you know, I live in a rural place in upstate New York and the way, when I talk to people here, they, they know, they right. know what's going on. It's just their, their hands are tied. They know it's, they see it happening. They see it happening. The farmers, right. farm right. equipment, you know, look, look at what John Deere does to make sure that you can't repair your own yeah. tractor. That you supposedly purchase, but you can only get them repaired with parts and people from John Deere. Mm -hmm. That's and that's you know the right to repair stuff that we talked about on the show earlier. Yeah, you know, this kind of the IP laws. People understand that patents are being used to abuse, uh, used in an abusive way to right. just keep to keep products down, even if they're better. Yeah, um, I think people do understand it. I just think there, there's no there's no mechanism right now besides. I mean, the the powers that be say all you have to do is vote, right. which is not the answer. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. um, but that's the only way they have to express their 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 discontent right now. Well, next week with Michael Collins on the show, I think it'll yes. be interesting when we talk about AI and AI overlords, and we want to thank all you people that were about to take over and control and ruin your yes. lives. Yes. Um, no, no, we're here for you. Um, that's our new slogan. We're here for you. We're here for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, but but the interesting thing is going to be. That Thursday, he's on Friday. The following Thursday is the election. It'll be interesting to see what his take is then on the election. Oh, you're right. The um, Tuesday. With, yeah. with, with, uh, it'll be six days away at that point. And I read an article. It was either in the Journal or the Financial Times. And even a commentary I saw on television that they said it could take up to 30 days now before we can tell you who oh, president is. Where before it would be like, I go what to bed happened? at night and the next yeah, morning right, I that, see in the paper. What happened when we could know that yeah. night? You know, yes. because they said there's going to be lawsuits and this and that. And Trump's now suing the British government because he said they're interfering with uh, the Labor Party's interfering with our election. It was OK. Oh, but, they, but they were. They were sending. They yeah, were. They, they, they were. Though. They got the Russians sending, and nobody cared. And nobody did anything about that. Either. Well, sending, ran, so, you know, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's just this such a BS cycle. It's kind of like, listen, elect the king. Get it over with. Apparently, you don't like democracy, and that's it. Like, let's just call it a day. I mean, because that's really what we're heading. I mean, the, the problem is democracy only works, and they said this in Greek times, it only works with an informed population. And at the time, Mystery. people were informed, <laughs> properly informed. They had discourse. Right. They had the concept of civil discourse, and we do not have that today. Yeah. A lot of, for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, when when we're graduating people from high school that, you know, can't uh, they can't read. I mean, what the hell do you expect? 
Yeah. Yeah, but they don't know anything, which is terrible. It's like, how do you put out a person and they don't know history? You know, like, you know what I mean? It's like, and we talk about that when you talk about, like, say, Gaza, or you talk about World War II, or you talk about going back to the Greeks. Most of them, you know, think it's a yogurt. So they don't have a clue. Like, when I see these guys and they'll be like, they'll make fun of the kids. They'll be like, when we were kids, when we were kids, we had a, we actually came home with homework. That's Not right. on an iPad. We came home, we had to write stuff right down. Then. We had like, you went, you went to, you came home, you played, you came home, you had two or three hours worth of homework. You know, you had quizzes like every other day. Like you, uh, when I went to school, you learned. Yeah, you were tested. You, like you knew. Yeah. And today they don't. And that goes with whether it's eating, going back to your drugs, or just in general. And that's the scary thing that nobody has a clue anymore Um, because the parents of those kids don't have a clue. So it's almost like my generation, the guys and girls that were born in, if you will, in the sixties, that's the last generation of people with a clue that had good education, whatever. I'm sure some people, you know, that's, that's the thing. There's, there's always this, there's always a, a sliver of people who buck the trend. And I, and I do, I feel like I know some people who are, who are doing their best to be informed in a world that's very difficult to be informed in to begin with. But, um, but the problem is you need, you need, you need a critical mass of people to be, to be thoughtful, to have civil discourse, to be curious, to be critical. And uh, we don't, we, we have a very passive, a very passive population, um, and it's not know, just we have in a woke. Book, you know, it's... we have a woke population, pussies. <laughs> so, and woke is now. I read an article. People are fed up with woke. Well, no, woke is DEI and all that is uh, on the way out. From what I thank guess. God, ESG well, yeah. and ESG finally got they got rid of that. Crap. ESG, that you know, because the the, the the whole greenwashing that well, we called them out on the show. That's what happened. Yeah, we did that like a year ago. We're ahead we, of the curve. Them, yeah. Here's what's here's what's funny. I said this to David. Um, we did a show on no snobs or knobs about a month ago on something. And about a week later, I think it was the Financial Times had this whole article on literally our show without mm-hmm. mentioning. It was, I look, I said, David, did you see? I sent it to him. I go, he goes, hey, we did that show a week ago. So someone from the Financial Times and The Economist has done this as well. We've seen, I've read an article in The Economist and I'll send it to David. I go, didn't we just do this show two weeks ago? He's like, yep. So yeah. it's either a real coincidence or the Financial Times or someone at The Economist is watching all our shows because every now and then, at least once a month, one of our shows appears in an article, but not our show, if you know right, what I mean. Right. Like, I'm well, like, we'll, do, we'll, we we'll keep doing our best yeah. to stay yeah. on top of it, yeah. But they did beat us on the drugs. So kudos yeah. to you, The Economist, for beating yeah, us, on, beat for us on the drugs. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah a, for once. No, the thing, I, 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 will, I will tell you, the reason why I didn't, yeah. I heard about, I mean, we all on this show heard about Ozempic a long time ago, yeah. but I didn't bring it up because I didn't want to fan the flames. Gotcha. I didn't want to fan the flames of, of, of a crazy idea of people taking this drug just because it did this or that. Right. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's out it there. Really, so it, you've got to yeah. acknowledge it. I, my brother-in-law, he, you know, he, he's, you know, diabetic and he right. started taking, I, I, I don't know if it's Ozempic or, and boy, I mean, he was, he was. Oh, he was really, he wasn't huge, but, uh, you know, he needed to lose weight. Uh, yeah, yeah. And boy, he, it just, I, I saw him like, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, a month ago. And I was like, what, what, you know, wow. he was, right. yeah, I mean, he was a completely different person, you know, feels better, yeah. healthier. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's still diabetic he though. Yeah. He's still, yeah. Okay. He, he needs, well, I, know, he needs, I, I know sometimes that'll change it. So yeah, I, I think yeah, I believe it still is, you know. Okay. Yeah, he still got the he still has to take the drug. So yeah. Right. Yeah. But the good thing is you lost weight, so now it's good for your heart. Yeah. I mean, so. he does he he he's not a good eater, you know, but going back to the stuff. Right. <laughs> he loves his McDonald's. I know that, okay. you know, when he's he's Lunchtime, I think McDonald's is 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 a big attraction. I don't know if he still does it, but right. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. This is the problem with this these drugs, though. I can go to I can I will I won't go to McDonald's, but I can go to McDonald's or an Arby's or a Burger King. I don't even know if they're still around. One of those places, right? And I can order whatever's on the menu, make believe food, eat the make believe food, then pop my pill, right? And right. now. I'm the healthiest guy on the planet because I popped my pill because now it counteracts all the crap. Right. Counteracts so, the inflammation, yeah. the sugar, everything. 
It's that's to me the craziest thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, it's yeah. we're just we're a lazy country. We just want the easy way on everything. Now we talked about this a little before the show. When you talk about like curing cancer or other drugs, where these guys said I found the cure, and other scientists go, Yes, they have, and then the next day they get hit by a car. I find that fascinating as well. Yeah, well, yeah, well like, you got to find the documentary because I've heard I've heard that many times, and uh, it is it's not just with it's not just with drugs; it's with you know everything. cars that need that that run on you know water or whatever water, they run yep. on. There's, right. a guy, yeah. there's a there's a guy on Instagram. My buddy sent it to me, and he's got a book. I guess you can buy. Of course, everybody does, and he goes through all the thirty or forty guys. One was a guy who cured Parkinson's, dead. One was a guy who cured cancer dead the guy who car runs on water or air or sunlight whatever well it was dead. like the uh the ones what was it the uh the cancer researchers those eight that that just happened this year those it was eight cancer researchers right with some breakthrough that nobody that only they knew i suppose yeah and they were going to present it at a conference and the plane crashes and they all die so yeah. well uh, you yeah. know that's don't uh, hey, that's my point there, there's forces for lack of a better term that are going to make sure that things roll out just the way they're supposed to roll out. So whether you want to believe that's the lizard people or the Illuminati, whatever it is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's somebody. And I'm belonging to both clubs. It right. Is. So you're covered. You, you're, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So don't if you're gonna roll out anything like that, come see me first. We'll make a that's deal right. and uh, we'll fake your death and uh, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll live on Pluto with everybody else. All right, we're gonna go to Lost and Found Boys. Let's do it. Let's do Before it. Before we do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna you gotta see this. wonder how millions vanish into thin air, or how a single dollar can make all the difference. Join us on Lost and Found, where we dive into the wild world of financial mysteries. From misplaced fortunes to unexpected windfalls, we unravel the stories of people, companies, organizations, and even governments who've lost and found millions. Lost and Found, because every dollar has a story. All right, John. Does have a story. You were AI last week. Tell us this week you're lost and found. All right, so uh, I'm continuing with the theme that I've been. I probably in the last I don't know two years. Uh, okay. About this, and a couple of weeks ago, you know, uh, well, AI has been big on 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 how how do they find clean energy energy to yes. to to, to support their, you know, their, I guess their huge need for electricity. And right. okay, it started with Three Mile Island with, with Microsoft, you know, they're looking to restart that, the, one of the plants there. Now, and then the Biden administration is, is, is loaning the uh, plant in, in Michigan at 1.5 billion to, to resurrect that plant. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Next Air Energy, is is looking into restarting the 60 600 megawatt uh nuclear plant in iowa so you know uh -huh. yeah we're so, gonna glow in the dark people gonna, yeah. yeah right <laughs> so, we're going nuclear yeah so but you know we're 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 restarting the stuff that we, we we've been closing and because yeah. it's the quickest way to to clean energy you know and yeah okay if everybody says about nuclear waste but Nuclear waste is not actually waste. There's still, you know, eighty percent energy left in that. It, when, right. and they, yeah, they we just don't know how to use it yet. Yeah, we can recycle it. There is a, you know, there is a process to, to recycle it and and put it back into into plants. So, Look at this way, John. If you take the pill and even get to live to be two hundred and fifty, yeah, the stuff that they're doing today is going to kill you in ten thousand years. So as long <laughs> as you don't live to be ten thousand, you don't. We're care. covered. You're yeah. covered. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll glow in the dark. So you know, I, I think it's it's good for everybody. So I think it's a, okay. it's, a it's a it's a win. It's a win. Yeah, dollar win for everybody. Since we don't have the sound effects, 
David right. has that on there. Oh, all right. Yeah, that, that's a Dave. David's the sound that's effect. That's a David guy. thing. David's out this week. We got no yeah, sound David, effect. David, David no took sound too much effect. Viagra. Um, so he is what you call it. He read the bottle wrong. It says, I think, take one every six hours. David took six every one hour. So um, David should be back next week. Um, exhausted, but he'll be back. So there you go. Right. So there we have it. Michael, what do you have for us today? All right. Yes. Well, uh, Boeing obviously has had a lot of issues. <laughs> And they've got even more now. They 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 launched a they launched a satellite in 2016 right. for communications across Europe, Asia, and Africa. And on Saturday, it blew up. The, uh, uh, the U.S. The space Force, the, <laughs> the U.S. Space Force and Russia's space agency both both said that uh, the satellite exploded. It was instantaneous and high energy, wow. and uh, the satellite is no more. They they just tracking the pieces of it, circling the Earth. And next week, Boeing is going to launch a passenger rocket to Mars. So feel free on getting on that. Exactly. Yeah, that'll be pretty good. So, all right. Well, I have two about the same guy. You know, my favorite person, Elon Musk. Oh, um, boy. This is an article from Bloomberg from Tuesday or Wednesday this week. Elon Musk is now X's biggest promoter of anti-immigrant conspiracies. The billionaire owner is spreading and debunking theories of undocumented voters swaying the way the U.S. election um, is uh, in being influenced. So I thought that was very interesting that Musk, um, an immigrant himself, um, who should basically, uh, I don't well, know. Illegal I don't know. Yeah, well, illegal immigrant. Illegal immigrant. Well, we don't really know. I, I, you know, I'm going to be like Trump and Obama. Is he really? I don't know. <laughs> um, so anyway, but I thought that was interesting that basically he's he's – basically using his platform to be uh, Goering. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and then the other thought I thought was interesting, which the Department of Justice said to him, Mr. Musk, no, 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 paying a million dollars a day to people for some lucky person to register to vote in Pennsylvania, just saying that violates, and I read the article, there's so many laws apparently that it violates, they told his super PAC or whatever, like if you keep doing it, someone's going to jail. And literally their comment was not if Trump wins. So oh, wow. <laughs> that is basically the mentality is that if Mr. Trump wins, Musk can get away with what he, they're perfect for each other. So, and huh. I thought that was very yeah, interesting. I didn't see that one. Yeah. So that yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, you shouldn't be giving money to people who are registering to vote, yeah. but. Uh, you know, we talked about this yesterday on Vaguely True, which you can see because it's the show's up. We did we live yesterday and went up yeah, uh, yeah, on Thursday. So it's up for the people that are watching this on Saturday. And we were talking about the difference between Trump and Ms. Harris. And I said, you know, back in 2016, when Billy Bush was talking to me, he goes, you know, I grabbed a lot of pussy in my day and blah, 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 blah. I said, you know what Ms. Harris needs to do? She needs to have an open mic or come on our show. Either is fine. And she needs to say, you know, when I was young, I grabbed a lot of dick. That's <laughs> what you I said, then that. That's the answer. All right. Yeah. Stop wearing a pantsuit and look like a lesbian. She needs to wear short skirts, let her boobies hang out, and guys are going to be like, "Oh, she should be our president." Oh and my god! She needs to like reverse psychology and stop talking about Trump and become a hot, sexy mama for the last seven or eight days before the election, and that maybe will help her. But the latest New York Times poll this morning that came out right before our show says that they are in a dead heat, literally like fifty. I'm sure it's you know so I'm hard sure to believe these polls. Yeah. Though. Yeah, it's so hard to do. They, they were so off in the Hillary day. Remember, they all said that Hillary was going to win back when uh, she yeah. was. Yeah, but, I didn't think she, but I didn't think she would. I thought Hillary no, was well, going to win. I didn't think so win. either. But, you know, so, yeah. all the, every poll was out there saying that yeah. she was going to win. And, and it wasn't even close. Yeah. So I, don't, I, I find it so hard to find a good poll to, uh, to trust. Yeah. I think yeah. it's better to find – if you got to find the people gambling on the, uh, on the election. Oh, the yeah. guys with crypto now, which now yeah, they're looking into right. that could be that could be considered illegal, which I get a kick out of. Everything's illegal until it's not in our country. You know, what oh, I mean? right. like, well, gam online gambling is totally legal now. Right. But I'm just saying now the crypto people are betting and it's like, OK, and this one's betting and that one's betting. It's truly we, we are really becoming just a movie, you know, whether it's Demolition Man or whatever <laughs> it may be. But we are really becoming a movie. We are not the United States of anything anymore. It is just literally, I just sit back every day. It's sort of like, I can't wait to see what Saturday Night Live does it this week. That's kind of how I look at it. So. The thing is, you know, 
we're all if, if you get sucked into social media and TV right. and, and, and right, stuff, then you know you think uh, everything is it, it's 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 terrible. But you know you walk out the street and yeah. talk man, to real people, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and life it really in is general, terrible. and it's like oh, it's not that bad, really. You know, <laughs> it's just you know well, we get hyped well, into most this. Most people don't participate in it. You yeah. Know, I, yeah. New Shorts yeah. reminds me, most people don't participate in the process that is all over the screens. Yeah. And those are the I, people who are just, have, they're just living. They're yeah. just trying to have a life. Yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you look at it, it, you know, bad news sells. And so, you know, right. all of the, the things that we, the, that we uh, access, right. you know, either, either the internet or TV or radio or whatever, it's all about bad stuff. No, nobody talks about the good stuff, which, you know, which I'm, there is a lot of. There, are, I, you know, there's tons of it, right? Yeah, tons tons of, of it. We should do a whole show then on only good news. I yeah. don't know what it is, but we should do a whole show on it. So, I mean, listen, I read like you guys. Right? I read my four or five papers in the morning. I watch Bloomberg, um, so I get that kind of news. I don't watch like the feel good, like some lady saved a dog or a horse or a puppy, which is great. I'm more worried about the global economy. Could there be a World War III, you know, or a mini war here, how that's going to affect things? So I look at it more realistic then. And good news is great, but you know, in the feel-good story that somebody oh, rescued. I mean, good news would be good news would be all the work that that the FTC and Lena Khan is doing to uh to go after the monopolies. That's good news. Is it? Yeah, well, it depends on what side of the coin you are, right? right? Because, because it's not good for like the super rich, rich, you know. You know, the fire guy goes into a tree, pulls the cat. That's that's good news. I, listen, I'm monopolies are a funny thing because in the 80s, we broke up ATT and made them baby bells. Ten right. years after that, they became back to ATT, right? We got rid of the baby bells. Look, eh, monopoly is good again. It's just it's we go with the breeze. I'm glad she wants to break up the Google well, and break up the this and all this other. Forty but years to get to this point. Yeah, and then what will end up happening? We, if Trump gets in, let's assume we don't break it up. Someone will get in twenty years from now. We'll break it up. Ten years later, we'll go back and blah 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 blah. It's just it's just a cycle. So to me, it's more of like, so what are we going to do to better humanity and the planet? That's really what I always want to hear from anybody. Yeah. I never hear. What we're doing, I hear a bunch of stupid stuff, and I'm like, "Someone just tell me how are we going to help everybody?" You know what I mean? Like instead of that making would be, them work, those would be them. good stories. We got to find. Yeah, them. that would be a feel-good story. If someone says, "Hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do this, and that's going to help everybody." I would love to do a show on who's proposing an alternative that's going to actually help more people rather than yeah. concentrate wealth to fewer people. That would be and great. I'm all, and I'm all for that. And then we'll have to, of course, kill them afterwards because right. you can't have we'll right. Come on, let's not kill them. They'll have to die the next day. But it'll be nice to hear what they want to say. So right. yeah, that'll be good. Anyway, guys, it's always a pleasure to see you. Don't forget, next week our show will be at 3 o'clock Eastern. If That's you're right. watching live, if you're going to watch the rebroadcast, it comes out at 6 o'clock Eastern in the morning on Saturday. So you have all weekend to listen to it or you can listen to the podcast. I'll thank my my boys here. David, we'll see you next week. Mr. Collins will be here to talk about the AI overlords. Yes. We'll also ask him what he thinks of the upcoming election. Um, and and I guess who he thinks I'm not gonna ask him who he's voting for. I'm just gonna ask him what if candidate A and B wins, well, what does that do to his AI hypothesis? I think that's a good question mm, for him. That's so because I don't want to put him on the spot because it's none of my business who you vote for. So I don't, right. yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not in what you call, we're not in Germany in the 1930s or Russia today. <laughs> so we're, we're not in Russia today, right? No, okay. So Russia, we no, not today. No, we're good. Gentlemen, it's always good to see you, John. All right, everybody. Say goodbye. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Yeah.